Hello engineers, welcome back to Civil Nirman. Now we will evaluate whatever we have learned in the past three sessions related to the compression member. So if you are here for the first time, I just recommend you to watch that past three sessions where we have explained in brief about compression members, its parameter, its failure part, Euler's buckling stress and how to, how to identify the various buckling classes right and the effective length parameter as well so understand that portion first and then come here so it so it will be easy for you to understand the manual calculation validation with respect to the stat results now in uh, order to make it more easy what I have done is I have considered one single member where we will implement the load and we will work out the results with the manual calculation right so what I have done I have considered one fixed cantilever beam as you can observe over here with a 2.5 meter length now see modeling is not a big deal so here I have already modeled the member and the length is specified with the 2.5 meter length now if I talk about the loading part so in the loading part I have applied 100 kilo Newton load to this particular member Also, I have assigned the property as an angle member. So I have considered ISA 150, 115, 16. Okay. Now the reason for considering the angle section is di directly we can identify the section classification as class C, right? Whatever we have learned for the buckling class parameter, right? The angle sections are the profile that are directly fall under class C. So we don't need to separately calculate that. Okay. Now for the different categories of member you can work out the section classification and then validate too now to just to give you a quick highlight i have preferred the angle profile okay so the loading is 100 kilo newton now the most important part the design parameter here we have considered is cantilever so that particular representation should be there instead as well okay so the most important part that relates with the design part in the stat the, that how you want to design your member as a cantilever segment parameters are the most important point in this stat analysis okay so we will switch to the parameters and I'll quickly just brief you about the parameters what are the assumptions we what we have done based on that we will validate the results because see, in the manual calculation as well you need to cross validate those checks so the first thing is the member which we have considered is the cantilever portion right it is fixed at one end and free at the other end okay so we need to specify those parameter as well so here to give that segment I have specified the design parameter can as one can one to specify it as an cantilever beam okay next important point this particular member we are assuming that the member is connected by the single angle leg okay and that particular is represented over here whether it's a concentric loading or eccentric loading right uh, if you remember we have that design clause here right loaded through one leg in our IS 800 2007 clause so based on this we will consider the calculation we are assuming that the member is loaded through member is what you can say the member is connected by a single angle and loaded through one leg and I am considering this particular parameter 7.5.1 and here also it's specified so I am considering a and G parameter as one applic it's specified in the stat as well that only applicable for the members with single angle section if loaded through any of the legs flexible torsional buckling will be checked otherwise not so we will check the flexural torsional buckling as well okay then next is fixity now it specifies whether you are considering the other part of the segment as hinge or fix so here we are considering the hinge segment okay the level of fixity at the member end by any value so the end portion we are assuming is hinged okay so here fixity is zero then we have the NBL parameter so as in any connection minimum two bolts are required right so that I am specifying over here minimum two bolts anyway we provide so here I am specifying NBL as two and if 
there is only one bolt assumption if you are calculating the manual calculation as well for the one bolt then you have to specify it at zero otherwise it will be one okay and track two is for the detail output file so in the detail it will provide the in detail results regarding the design portion right so for this 2.5 meter member which is ISA 150, 115 and 60 okay angle section let me just show you in the 3D as well see this is the angle section right now see for the manual calculation part we will require uh, its steel parameters okay so we will consider that from the steel table part mm. I guess my software is little bit lagging let me just restart it so let's just start again so I have briefed you about all the parameters right now let's just run the analysis for this 100 kilo Newton and let's see what results we are getting only single load case okay so I'll just uh, so now let's just run the analysis for this single 100 kilo Newton load and let's see what are the results we are getting and based on this result we will validate those results with the manual calculation right so as I have provided track 2 uh, it will give me the design output in detail we will understand that output so I'll click here in the output file on steel design now see STAD is providing you in detail uh, the segment regarding your loading part and the member property you can check out over here so the member is passed it is showing 0.263 ratio that we need to validate okay critical design forces uh, you can check see I have only applied FX force that is 100 kilo Newton so it is specifying over here 100 kn these are the sectional properties uh, you can get these values from your steel table itself right in order to work out the manual calculation we will require the modulus of elasticity value right and the Poisson's ratio next is the slenderness check here the actual length is 2.5 meter LZ is 2.5 as we have only a single member right KY KZ we are assuming as a hinge segment okay so KY and KZ values are 1 okay actual ratio available is 102.46 and available ratio is 180 based on the slenderness part right so section classification is also specified over here semi-compact 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 class C okay now let's see the results over here so if I talk about the results uh, you can observe they have specified the results here in this three part major axis force minor axis force so if you check over here see the design force is 100 kilo Newton that we have implemented and its capacity is 750 okay similarly so ultimately we are getting capacity as 750.2 that we need to validate with the manual calculation if I talk about the minor axis force is as usual 100 kN but if I talk about the minor axis capacity the value we are getting is 421.77 the clause is also specified and similarly they have checked the flexural torsional buckling okay where we are getting the capacity as 380.23 right so we will validate all these three results with the manual calculation so stay tuned with us so now let's just started with the manual calculation part right so as we have understood uh, these are the design steps uh, that uh, we have considered right calculate the lambda value then we need to work out the buckling class using table 10 then we have to work out the friction factor alpha right based on the buckling class a b c d 
we will work out the value of phi then find out hcd right so let's just start it so uh, we will start with the first calculation of the lambda value right so how we will work out that so we already know the equation right so what is the equation uh, so the equation is uh, lambda z is equals to f y k l upon r whole square divide by pi square e right uh, we know all these values f y is the yield strength 250 k value is 1 why 1 because we have assumed the hinge conditions at the free end okay divide by r r is 5.21 okay then next we have pi square into e value what is e value now see e value is basically your modulus of elasticity that is 205 into 10 raised to 3 right so you can work out this value from your stat uh, material category itself and if I work out uh, the whole segment right I'll get the value as uh, let me just calculate it so I'll receive the value as 0.533 right now what is the next step uh, next step then it, we need to work out as we need to work out the buckling class using table 10 right so for that particular what we will do uh, we will work out that our section is what we have used is what it's an angle section right and for angle section it will fall under class C so for class C uh, as per table 7 the a value will be 0.49 correct so as per table 10 you can say that as per table 10 buckling class is C why because we have considered the angle section and from the buckling class classification uh, you can directly identify the a value for buckling class c is 0.49 right you can refer the table from the code itself now as we have worked out a now we will work out the phi value now let's just go through the phi value equation you can work out that from the code itself minus 0.2 plus lambda z square right now I'll put it all the parameters over here a we have work out 0.49 lambda z we have already work out 0.2 plus 0.533 whole square so if I calculate this 0.5 into 1 plus 0 0.49 0 0.533 minus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.33 square so I'll get the value as 0.724 right then uh, we will go for the next part we need to work out the xi right so we have work out the phi value now for this xi we will work out phi z the equation from the code square minus lambda square right and from that particular uh, this particular equation is sorry I have made a mistake it's 1 1 divided by this whole value right so if I write it again 1 divided by uh, I'll get 0.724 plus whole square 0.724 square minus 0.533 square so I'll work out the value as 0.825 now let's move further so I'll get the FCD easily now why because I have 
get this i value as well so this is the final equation that we require 0.825 fy we have s250 okay and then we have gamma m0 that is 1.1 so i'll get the value as 187.4 mega pascal okay so fcd is already worked out now from the fcd part uh, we can directly get the value as pdz ae into fcd correct so i'll write it down quickly area we can directly get from the steel table itself it's in centimeter square and fcd we have got it as 187.4 mega pascal right so ultimately i get the value as 749 749.7 mega pascal 